Have you got the MTHFR gene mutation? And are you wondering what diet, lifestyle or supplement changes you should be making? Or perhaps you've already tried methylfolate and you just don't seem to tolerate it, even though your genetic code suggests that you should benefit from it. Well, these are the topics that we're going to discuss in today's video. If you haven't already seen my video on MTHFR symptoms and health conditions, I suggest that you do that first. If you haven't met me before, I'm Dr. Janelle Sinclair, and on this YouTube channel we discuss natural strategies for depression and anxiety. So if you're interested in that topic, please subscribe. So let's move on and talk about MTHFR gene mutation treatment considerations. Now let's discuss how you should compensate for the MTHFR gene mutations. I say compensate for rather than treat a genetic mutation because we're not actually treating the gene. We're just compensating for the biochemical glitch that it's causing. So we're going to talk today about diet, medications to avoid, lifestyle changes and supplementation. With the supplementation I'll talk about the different types of supplements you could consider and the dosages and also troubleshooting. So if your genetic code suggests that you should do really well on these supplements but you don't, um, I'll give you some different options there. So if I just want you to keep in mind that if you're heterozygous for an MTHFR um, genetic weakness, then you should just really be concentrating on the diet, medications to avoid and lifestyle changes. Um, you may consider a B complex or a multivitamin um, containing some methylfolate, but by and large, um, you really should be concentrating on the diet um, to help support your genetic weakness. Whereas if you've got your homozygous for an MTHFR um, genetic weakness or your heterozygous for both of the MTHFR SNPs that we discussed in the previous video, then um, in addition to the diet and lifestyle recommendations, you should also consider supplementation. And really, if, if you're doing well and you're healthy, you may only need minimal supplementation support. However, if you've got a, um, a, a condition, um, like, we said, like we discussed in the previous video, like depression or infertility, it's more likely that you're going to need higher doses of supplements. I've put all the treatment considerations for the MTHFR gene into a free report for you. You can download that report by using the link in the description below. So I think the most important consideration when it comes to compensating for the MTHFR genetic weaknesses is to eat folate and vitamin B12 rich foods. So ensure you're getting um, at least a couple of servings of these a day. So here's a list of the folate rich foods. They include citrus fruits, broccoli, romaine, lettuce, spinach, beets, avocado, seeds and nuts, asparagus, beans, peas and lentils. Now this is a post that I put up on Instagram so if you haven't joined me there please do at Dr Janelle Sinclair. So secondly ensure that you're eating enough vitamin B12 rich foods and these include organic liver, fish, red meat and eggs. Now I, I recommend that you avoid a vegan or vegetarian diet if you do have these MTHFR genetic weaknesses. Um, the vegan and vegetarian diets are very low in vitamin B12 and it's such a, an important nutrient for the methylation cycles. Another option is um, obviously just to supplement vitamin B12 but be very vigilant about doing that. Also consider that cooking destroys folate, so make sure that you're getting some of these rich folate foods, um, eating them raw. Okay. Also, you need to avoid supplements and food containing folic acid. So because the MTHFR gene uh, mutation um, means that you've got a weakness in converting folic acid into the, the active form of folate, um, you don't want to go and put more folic acid in your body. You're just overloading an already um, weak system. 
Also avoid folic acid blocking drugs such as birth control and methotrexate. Also nitrous oxide or gas which is used in dentistry and childbirth will also um, put um, stress on the methylation systems. Also avoid antacids as these block the absorption of vitamin B12 and other important nutrients for methylation. So another way to improve methylation in the body is to remove toxins from your environment. Basically, if the, the body's trying to get rid of toxins, it's using up lots of its um, methyl groups. So methylation is um, being reduced with those toxins around. So also support tox detoxification, improve sleep and reduce stress, as all of these will improve um, methylation. I've discussed this in a previous video that talked about epigenetics genetics and methylation and um, that's the video that is um, shown there. Okay now let's just talk about supplementation to improve methylation. So the first thing that you want to consider is supplementing with a B complex or multivitamin with methylfolate or methyl B12. So this is a great option for anyone that is um, heterozygous for the MTH of SNPs and anyone that's healthy and has the homozygous um, in, in MTH of SNPs. Um, the products that I've shown here in the, um, sc on the screen by Seeking Health are some really great options. Now I've um, joined as an affiliate with Seeking Health because I believe in their products so much and so you can find some affiliate links to these products in the description below and you'll be supporting this YouTube channel. Now don't forget to download your free report on the MTHFR gene and treatment considerations. I'm including all these dietary recommendations as well as links to the supplements and troubleshooting too. If you're homozygous for the MTHFR SNPs, you may want to consider supplementing with methylfolate and vitamin B12. So my suggestion is that you start with vitamin B12 first before you add in any methylfolate. This just helps open up the um, methylation cycle and the methylation pathways and can reduce any side effects with these, with these products. So you can start with 500 to 1000 micrograms a day and um, take this for about a week before you add in any methylfolate. So the, usually the form of vitamin B12 that I recommend is um, methylcobalamin, but you may not um, tolerate this if you have a genetic weakness in the COMT gene, and we'll discuss that a little bit later and also in next week's video. So after adding in vitamin B12, then you can add in some methylfolate. And the adult dose for this is 400 to 800 micrograms a day. And if you're very unwell or you have severe depression or infertility, this dose may um, go up to even 1600 micrograms a day. But my suggestion is that you start low on around 200 micrograms a day and build up slowly because then you'll avoid any side effects with methylfolate. And there's a Seeking Health product, the Active B12 with um, MTHF, which is methylfolate. So that's a really great option. And it's a lozenge, so you can cut it in quarters. So you can start with a quarter to begin with and then build up um, maybe every three days, um, taking an extra quarter. Okay, so some of these, there are potential side effects with methylfolate and some of the symptoms include anger outbursts, headache, migraine, rashes, irritability, anxiety, joint pain, muscle pain, insomnia and depression. So I know that some of you will be taking methylfolate to treat depression um, and or treat migraine, but the thing is what you're looking for is any new symptoms okay so if you've never had migraine before and you start to get migraine after starting the methylfolate then that's um, potentially a side effect from the supplement so look for any new side of new side effects or symptoms after you've started the methylfolate so let's talk about how you can reduce these side effects or avoid them altogether or what to do if you get them okay 
So firstly, start on a low dose um, of methylfolate and B12 and build up slowly. So more is not always better because you don't want to over methylate, but you don't want to under methylate either. So it's just trying to find that balance. Um, Dr. Ben Lynch talks sometimes about just taking um, it every second day or so or you know, taking it for three days and having a day off. So um, just keep consider that for the future if, if you're not quite sure if it's um, working right for you. Also, if you're having um, side effects like muscle aches and real pain um, in your body um, and maybe headaches, consider taking an electrolyte. And um, this is a Seeking Health Optimal Electrolyte, and that's been formulated again by Dr. Ben Lynch, and he's the one that has recommended that people take the electrolyte, and that can really reduce the side effects with methylfolate. Okay. So moving on, can, when you consider about side effects of, um, of the methylfolate, remember that when you're increasing methylation in the body, you're actually increasing detoxification. So some of these side effects can be due to the body actually just going through a normal detoxification effect. So if you are reacting badly to methylfolate, again, just drop the dose and build up slowly, but also support your detoxification pathways. So taking charcoal or something like Toxaprevent, which is a zeolite product, can um, reduce um, side effects. Um, take them separately at separate times, so um, in between meals. Um, sorry, take the charcoal and Toxaprevent separately to the methylfolate. Okay. Also, infrared saunas are a great way to um, support detoxification in the body. Also, just check that you're having a, a regular bowel motion every day because, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you are going regularly, drinking enough water, so um, one and a half to two litres of water a day, and even um, juicing, vegetable juicing is a great way to support the kidneys. So if you've followed the suggestions for troubleshooting, you're still having problems with the methylfolate, even though you have uh, your homozygous for the MTHFR genetics um, SNPs. And, and another option is to take a little bit of niacin alongside the methyl B12 and the methylfolate. It just helps balance out that methylation. And you can take 50 milligrams and um, Seeking Health make a niacin lozenge. Um, and remember the affiliate links are down below in the description. The other option is to take hydroxy B12 and or folinic acid supplements instead of the methylated B12 and methylated folate. So the, this is giving the methylation cycles, the vitamin, uh, the vitamin B12 and the, the folate, but it's not giving them the methyl groups. And so just for sensitive people, um, this can help improve methylation, but is, doesn't yeah, give you those side effects. And this is usually um, really good, for a great option for anyone with a COM-T um, genetic weakness. Um, so if you are, have the COM-T genetic weakness and a homozygous for that, um, this is a consideration that... Um, yeah, that you might want to follow. I've put all this information together about MTHFR and its treatment considerations, and I'll put that into a free report for you. So I suggest you download it. There's a link in the description below this video. And if you haven't joined me on Facebook or Instagram yet, check me out at um, Dr. Janelle Sinclair. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.